I have a dream. Crystal Meth Legalization Thesis Part 4 Has the Order of Primus St. Croix Lost Its Goddamn Mind? Oh, don't be nervous, folks. Petar is fine. He just fell in a rabbit hole. That's all. <laughs> Such a stupid way to start a video. Alright, so in Part 1, we discussed how Emperor Haile Selassie I never signed the United Nations 1971 Psychotropic Substances Convention. And we therefore concluded that crystal meth, LSD, PCP, psilocybin, DMT, etc., etc., that these psychedelic substances should be legal because Haile Selassie didn't sign the convention, which technically made them legal, making it immoral to criminalize them. In part two, we discussed the absurdity of legalizing these substances, and we also discussed the unintended consequences of criminalization. In part three... Omar discussed how the letter of the law must be reconciled with righteousness and prudency because it does it just doesn't make sense to to legalize substances such as crystal meth and and poisons noxious narcotic substances and he also made mention of article 510 of the 1957 penal code which is the key here the key here is article 510 of the 1957 penal code so, in part four, I'll be discussing the reason why Haile Selassie didn't sign the United Nations Psychotropic Substances Convention in 1971, and I'll also be discussing the correct interpretation of the penal code. Let's start off by looking at the United Nations Psychotropic Substances Convention of 1971 and why Emperor Haile Selassie didn't sign it. Okay, just because he didn't sign it doesn't mean these substances aren't illegal. And just because he didn't sign it doesn't mean that, is, that it is immoral to criminalize these substances. So the reason Haile Selassie never signed the 1971 Psychotropic Substances Convention of 1971 is because in Article 32, entitled Reservations, there is a provision in here that states on Section 4, a state on whose territory there are plants growing wild which contain psychotropic substances from among those in Schedule 1 and which are traditionally used by certain small, clearly determined groups in magical or religious rites may, at the time of signature, ratification, or accession, Make reservations concerning these plants in respect of the provisions of Article 7, except for the provisions relating to international trade. So essentially what this is saying is that whoever signed this treaty, which included member states such as the Vatican and the Democratic Republic of Ethiopia with Mengistu, they have the right, all of the states that signed this have the right to make exceptions concerning religious rites using these psychotropic substances. So LSD, psilocybin, DMT, PCP, these dangerous chemicals, crystal meth, okay, they can be used for religious rites if a territory decides that they have an indigenous population that will use it legally. Haile Selassie didn't agree with that. Haile Selassie did not agree with this exception here where someone, where one country could make an exception to this rule, right? And if we go to Haile Selassie's um, penal code, we will see that Article 510 states that the production, making, or distribution of poisonous or narcotic substances... Section 1, whosoever without lawful authority produces or makes, transforms, imports, exports, or transports, acquires or receives, stores, offers for sale, or distributes, or procures for another, poisons, drugs, or narcotic substances, is punishable with simple imprisonment for not less than three months and with fine not exceeding $20,000. The same punishment may be inflicted upon anyone who knowingly places at the disposal of another, even privately, premises where the taking of drugs or narcotic substances is practiced. The court may pass sentence of rigorous imprisonment, 
not exceeding five years and impose a fine not exceeding $30,000. Where the offense is committed by a band or association organized for this traffic or by a person who makes a profession of such felonious activities or where such forbidden toxic substance or access to the premises is furnished knowingly for gain or for an improper motive to an infant or young person, a mental defect, or a drug addict. So the issue we were talking about in uh, the second uh, installment, the second part of the thesis, the second video, was that uh, the term drugs is, is uh, very narrow according to the 1964 pharmacy regulations. The reason the definition is very narrow in the pharmacy regulations, that it, which doesn't include the psychotropic substances from the convention of 1971, the reason it is so narrow is because it is referring to pharmacological substances, substances that are approved for medicinal use only in the United States pharmacopoeia. So like the reason those were an exception, the reason that that definition of the word drugs is is inadequate to cover every single drug is because the 1964 pharmacy regulation is only dealing with pharmacological pharmacologically approved drugs. Okay? It it has to because that is the nature of those regulations. Is, is the pharmacy regulations. So another point to this is that in 1957, the penal code was created, which is what we're looking at right here. But in 1964, the pharmacy regulations were created. So there is a definition, there is an imperial Ethiopian definition of the word drug seven years prior to the 1964 pharmacy regulations by default because they wrote the word drugs right here. The word is right here, drugs or narcotic substances. So there must have been a definition for the words drugs, poisons, narcotic substances before the pharmacy regulations were published in 1964. So even though that the, the pharmacy regulations uh, definition of the word drug is inadequate to cover every single drug, past, present, and future, there had to have been a definition for the word drug before the pharmacy regulations were published. So if we are only going off of the pharmacy regulations for our definition of the word drug, then your position must be that crystal meth should be legalized because it is immoral to criminalize it according to Haile Selassie. However, because there was a definition of the word drugs and because the Imperial Ethiopian government approved of a definition of the word drugs before the 1964 pharmacy regulations, we have to go off of that, that definition, the broad definition, as Omar put it, the broad definition of the word drugs. So how do we find a broad definition of the word drugs that the Imperial Ethiopian government um, certified? All right, the way we do that is we start looking at dictionaries. So I started looking at Amharic dictionaries because Haile Selassie, it was purported that Haile Selassie apparently endorsed a, an Amharic dictionary. And what actually occurred was Haile Selassie um, wrote a letter to an individual to create, a, create an Amharic dictionary. But that individual passed the letter on to somebody else who was not authorized to write the dictionary and the original author ended up dying so 40 years later when the when the person finished the dictionary after this guy's death he published the letter that was given to him by the original author who was authorized to write the dictionary and therefore he was not authorized to publish that dictionary by the emperor so the emperor didn't actually endorse that dictionary now that's one example so there are three dictionaries that were um, endorsed by the Imperial Ethiopian government, and they are all in English. There is not one Amharic dictionary that was endorsed by the Imperial Ethiopian government. Um, most of the Amharic dictionaries that I found con contain racist terminology. So it's no surprise that the Imperial Ethiopian government didn't... Uh, didn't endorse those texts. Now, the three dictionaries that were endorsed by the Imperial Ethiopian government prior to 1964 
were, and if we look at the materials for the study of the penal law of Ethiopia, we can see that Professor Lowenstein cited Nota Bene, which means mark well, Black's Law Dictionary will be helpful in defining many legal terms. He also cited Webster's New Collegiate Dictionary of 1951. So if we look at Black's Law Dictionary, it doesn't actually tell us which version, and there's many different versions, even though the words didn't uh, change that often back then, um, and there weren't that many editions. We can find an Imperial Ethiopian um, justice, Johannes Berhane. He wrote Delict and Torts. He was the vice president of the High Court and former member of the Supreme Imperial Court. He wrote in his book that Black's Law Dictionary was the fourth edition of 1951. Codes, Other Laws, and Dictionaries. Black's Law Dictionary, 4th edition, West Publishing Company, St. Paul, Minnesota, 1951. He wrote the 4th edition as the edition that, that, that is certified, that he was using as a justice in Haile Selassie's government. Okay, so we have Black's Law Dictionary of 1951, we have Webster's Collegia Dictionary of 1951, and from the Ethiopian Constitutional Development book, Volume 2, Martial Law was defined using Ballantine's Law Dictionary. So, Ballantine's Law Dictionary, I believe, was cited as 1948, if I'm not mistaken. All right. Right here you can see Ballantine Law Dictionary, 1948, cited on page 500. So, if we plug in the dictionary definitions of these words back into the penal code, we now have justification for the criminalization of every drug because the definition is very broad in these dictionaries. So if we go to the penal code, it says poisons, drugs, or narcotic substances. Now, let's look at Black's Law Dictionary from 1951. Let's look at the term drug. And it says, the general name of substances used in medicine. Any substance, vegetable, animal, or mineral, used in the consumption or preparation of medicines. Any substance used as a medicine. Carol Perfumers versus State of Indiana. Hammond versus State of Arkansas. The term is also applied to materials used in dyeing and in chemistry. See generally Collins versus Banking Company, North Carolina. Insurance Company versus Fleming, Arkansas. So you even have in these law dictionaries, you even have case law that the Imperial Ethiopian government endorsed for the use of legal terminology. That's a revelation. Ballantine's Law Dictionary from 1948 defines cannabis as a narcotic drug derived from the marijuana plant, People versus Yergin. As defined in the Uniform Narcotic Drug Act, it includes A, the dried flowering or fruiting tops of the pistillate plant, Cannabis Sativa, line from which the resin has not been extracted. B, the resin extracted from such tops, and C, every compound manufactures salt derivative mixture or preparation of such resin or of such tops from which the resin has not been extracted. Cannabis is a drug according to the law dictionaries that Haile Selassie's Faculty of Law from the Haile Selassie I University endorsed. Drug in Webster's New Collegiate Dictionary. Any substance used as a medicine or in making medicines, also formerly any stuff used in dyeing or in chemical operations. An article of slow sale or in no demand as a drug on the market. A narcotic substance or preparation to affect with drugs, especially to stupefy by a narcotic drug. Now you can play around with these, uh, these dictionaries 
and you can look up the definition of the word narcotic in every single one of them. But what we need to do is we need to now expand our scope of the penal code because now we have dictionary definitions to go with the terminology. For instance, indecency, which is mentioned a few times in the penal code, is defined as an act against good behavior and a just delicacy. Timmons versus the U.S., CCA Ohio. This is scarcely a technical term of the law and is not susceptible of exact definition or description in its juridical uses. The question whether or not a given act, publication, etc. is indecent is for the court and jury in the particular case. So it says indecent um, is defined as offensive to common propriety, offending against modesty or delicacy, grossly vulgar, obscene, lewd, unseemly, unbecoming, indecorous, unfit to be seen or heard, Hutchison versus State of Georgia. Wood versus State of Georgia. So, you can read all of these definitions now. Indecent publications such as are offensive to modesty and delicacy. Obscene, lewd, tending to the corruption of morals. Dunlop versus uh, U.S. So, it, 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 these are just um, basic definitions. The reason it's a revelation is because we have to look at every single word now differently that's, that's written in the penal code because people are trying to change the definitions of these words and we see that more and more often these days. But if your definition of a word contradicts with any of the definitions contained in these three dictionaries these three English dictionaries, then, then you are not of God and you are completely wrong. And you are invalid. Your definitions are invalid. Your definition of a certain word in today's modern etymology must not contradict any of these words. So you can't just essentially change the, the definition of the word marriage, for instance, and then plug in that new definition into Haile Selassie's 1957 penal code. The penal code talks about marriage based on the dictionary definition from the 1951 dictionaries and the 1948 dictionary. So marriage, as distinguished from the agreement to marry and from the act of becoming married, is the civil status, condition, or relation of one man and one woman united in law for life, for the discharge to each other and the community of the duties legally incumbent on those whose association is founded on the distinction of sex. And it gives you case law that you can read as well. So that's a revelation because the definition of a woman in these dictionaries is an adult human female. Adult female person. So if they're trying to change the definition of the word woman and then plug that formula back into the penal code, it's not going to work. You have to follow the dictionary definitions from 1951 and 1948. Okay? You cannot make up your own definitions and then corrupt Haile Selassie's laws. So, these dictionaries need to be studied. Ballantine's Dictionary of 1948, Black's Law Dictionary of 1951, Webster's New Collegia Dictionary of 1951. You must study these, these dictionaries in order to be proficient in Emperor Haile Selassie's laws. And you can take it a step further and even review the case law that is cited in the law dictionaries. So you have two law dictionaries and Webster's Dictionary. Now, the 1957 Penal Code, again, was translated into British English, yet Webster's New Collegiate Dictionary, Black's Law Dictionary, and Ballantine's Law Dictionary seem to be American English. So. The emperor approved of those three dictionaries to be used, regardless of the 1957 penal code being written in British English or translated in British English. So um, I'm not standing up here telling you we need to legalize crystal meth because it benefits me in any way. I am looking at the law and examining it from the perspective of interpreting the letter of the law how it's written, okay? So the letter of the law states that drugs or narcotic substances or poisons are unlawful. 
for use, distribution, you can't make it, you can't transform it, you can't import it, export it, acquire or receive, store, offer for sale or distribute, or procure for another, any of these substances. Okay, so if I'm up here and I'm telling you we need to legalize crystal meth because I, I'm in intentionally lying about that, I would be in violation of a penal code. Now, if I was sitting up here and telling you that we got to legalize crystal meth, because I did say that on a video, in the first video, and I knew that information was false, then I would be guilty of Article 672, harmful false information, whosoever being in a position to know the state of affairs of an undertaking, a commercial firm, or a cooperative, whether as founder, member, manager, director, attorney, member of a board of directors, or audit, or a liquidator, intentionally gives or causes to be given essential and untrue information, whether in notices to the public or in the proposals or reports to a general meeting, is punishable upon complaint when simple imprisonment or fine. Okay? But if I, in good faith, thought that because Haile Selassie didn't sign the 1971 Psychotropic Substance Convention and because he wanted to legalize those substances because of certain unintended consequences for their criminalization, then I am not guilty of spreading harmful false information because you have to intentionally deceive, intentionally give or cause to be given essential and untrue information. It was not my intent to give false information. My intent was to highlight Haile Selassie's laws and to demonstrate that the definition of the word drug that we have from the 1964 pharmacy regulations isn't adequate enough to encompass all drugs. Okay, so that was the purpose of the video. I did firmly believe that because the... 1964 pharmacy regulations definition of the word drug was narrow in scope that we had to in fact advocate for the legalization of those harmful substances because it's it, it, Haile Selassie's laws are not just telling you what's moral and immoral Haile Selassie's laws are also guiding us and teaching us what is moral and immoral to criminalize and to legalize for instance so we must study the dictionary definitions we must apply those dictionary definitions back into the penal code, back into His Majesty's codes, back into His Majesty's words. Because His Majesty's speeches now have um, different meanings and implications if we are applying those dictionaries to Haile Selassie's words. So, we also have case law to study, and which is cited in those law dictionaries. And that is how we rationalize the criminalization of every drug, past, present, and future. Because there's going to be drugs that are created 10 years from now that aren't listed in any of these United Nations treaties that Haile Selassie signed. So in order to encompass that, you have to follow the broad definition, the broad dictionary definition of the word drug, narcotic, and poisons. And you have to follow those three specific dictionaries. That is the answer. That is how we will justify the criminalization of these substances. Because before, the letter of the law wasn't allowing us to justify that because, the, the because of the nature of the very narrow scope of the pharmacy regulations de definition as opposed to the dictionary definition of the words drug and narcotic. So... That's where it stands right now. To be Rastafarian, you must study Rastafari's dictionaries. To follow his laws, you must implement the, the proper definitions of, of Haile Selassie's laws. And it's also interesting that the only language dictionaries that His Majesty endorsed were English and French. So the Amharic speaking uh, uh, people who, who try to discredit us and try to say that we are not qualified to interpret Haile Selassie's laws because we don't speak Amharic, His Majesty didn't even endorse an Amharic dictionary for use in, in the interpretation of law. So how can you then be very, how can you be specific with Haile Selassie's directives and laws if you don't even have a dictionary that was endorsed by His Majesty to interpret the law. 
is just an interesting way to uh, to dismantle uh, their argument, and you know, and that is how we are his representatives on earth. Not by self proclamation, but by actually doing the work, and by showing showing our work. Right now, I'm showing you how this works. So that's how it works. The research will continue. Um, part four, this is crystal meth legalization thesis part four. And in conclusion, crystal meth must be criminalized. According to Emperor Haile Selassie, it is a dangerous drug and it doesn't make sense to legalize it. Regardless of the arguments that you have, the dictionary definitions of the word drug encompass all crystal meth all psychotropic substances, all psychedelics, psilocybin, mushrooms, doesn't matter if it's if it's legal or if it's um if it's natural or synthetic. These substances were criminalized by Haile Selassie and then also Native Americans for instance, they use peyote in their rituals. However, Haile Selassie was um, the great buffalo high chief. Isn't that correct? Wasn't Haile Selassie proclaimed the great buffalo high chief by the Native American Indians? In 1954, Haile Selassie was given the title great buffalo high chief of the Native American Indians in the U.S. on June 18, 1954. So it, the source for this information is the 50th anniversary of his imperial majesty, Haile Selassie, the first visit to the United States from 1954 to 2004, page 65. So the, the book was published in 2004. So Haile Selassie being the great buffalo high chief of the Native American Indians means that he is the god of the Native Americans. And Haile Selassie criminalized all drugs for religious purposes. So DMT, ayahuasca, uh peyote, mescaline, all of these rituals that these Native American and uh, um, indigenous tribes are using for their religion are completely immoral and illegal according to the great Buffalo High Chief of the Native American Indians. According to the God of the universe, all of the psychotropic substances and psychedelics, whether natural or synthetic, are illegal and immoral to use. So, yes, Haile Selassie taught transcendental meditation as a substitute for drug abuse, but now that we have a definition of the word drug that encompasses, encompasses all drugs, those that are natural and synthetic, it is time to accept God's instructions, regardless of your faith. And the last point that I'm going to make is that there is an argument that states Haile Selassie was under international pressure, for instance, to criminalize substances such as cannabis because he was a participating member of the United Nations and he was essentially pressured into doing these things. There is a quote by Haile Selassie that says, we have, done, we have reformed Ethiopia's legal system, something along the lines, I'm paraphrasing, we have reformed Ethiopia's legal system, not under any pressure, but by um, our own will. That is, a, that is a, a paraphrase from the autobiography. And then also, the fact that Haile Selassie did not sign the United Nations Psychotropic Substance Convention in 1971 disproves this notion that Haile Selassie was under international pressure to sign United Nations treaties. So Haile Selassie signed the 1961 Single Convention on Narcotic Drugs because he agreed with it. Now he disagreed with the 1971 Psychotropic Substances Convention of 1971 because of a provision that allowed the religious use of those narcotics. So the notion that Haile Selassie was under international pressure to criminalize certain substances is completely false. You gotta stop smoking weed and you gotta stop using drugs. You just have to. There's no other way about it. Psychedelics, you just unless you know what I mean, unless it is approved in the United States Pharmacopoeia for use as a medicine, you know, you're 
you're in violation of the law according to Emperor Haile Selassie. You're not a law-abiding citizen in Imperial Ethiopia. And I think the only psychotropic substance, the, the only psychotropic substance that is uh, uh, right now um, allowed in the United States pharmacopoeia would be ketamine for medicinal purposes only. You know, by medical professionals, but everything else, you know, psilocybin, all this other stuff, they're still doing research on it. It's not, it has not been approved by the USP, the United States Pharmacopoeia. Therefore, it is completely illegal and not uh, not suitable for consumption if you are Rastafarian and if you're honest with yourself. And also, the argument that we are some kind of uh, anti-drug people with some kind of agenda is also, you can throw that theory out the window too with that argument because literally six months ago I'm, I was on video advocating for the legalization of crystal meth. So you can't even argue that I have some kind of hidden agenda where I'm like some racist dude that wants to vilify drugs and certain demographics that are prone to drug use or something makes no sense so I'm reading the laws just like everyone else we are trying to interpret it to the best of our abilities I encourage everyone else to research the law and to put our interpretation to the tests see if what we're saying is logical coherent does it make sense is it in accordance with the Emperor and I uh, I look I don't have to self appoint or self proclaim myself to be anything my research and my works speak for themselves.